Are you looking for logical solutions to your primary maths resource problems? Well, here on Resource Review, we're looking at three that might just help. They are a free website with mathematical games and solutions. Um, £100, take away 10 equals 90. A shapes and tiles pack. And a structured approach to problem solving. So keep watching to find out what our panel of experts think here on Resource Review. <laughs> Recommending today's resources, we have Judy Sayers. Judy is Senior Lecturer in Mathematics Education at the University of Northampton. On the panel today, we have Fran Bradshaw, Fran is Primary Advisor for Mathematics for Hertfordshire. And we also have Isaac Anum. Isaac is a Primary Maths Advisor, but known to many as Mr Number Beta. It's great to have you all on the show. Thanks for coming along. Judy, your first resource is the Enrich website, a free resource which teachers will like. But tell us more about the content of this website. Well, it's been, it's been around for about 10 years now, and it, it seems to be evolving um, as we speak. Um, there are new, it's, it's republished every month. There is a whole catalogue of resources that are free, as you say, um, for teachers, for children to download. Activities you can download onto your interactive whiteboard. You can use in the classroom whole class activity. You could download the sheets, resource sheets, and give them out as homework. You could give them for a group in your class that you want to um, stretch perhaps a little bit, or get them to do a problem solving activity. Well, before we discuss it any further, let's have a look and see whether Enrich can really enrich maths lessons. We went along to Simon Mark's Jewish School in North London, where teacher Norma Blair Claydon is using it with her year six class. Today we were trialing the Enrich uh, website's mathematical problems uh, suitable for Key Stage 2 slash Key Stage 3. They present us with certain problems that for you to have a look at and apparently they're suitable for Key Stage 2, which is what you are. I think it's investigational maths, you're going to look at it and see if you can solve the problem. We looked at uh, the chocolate problem where two boys uh, didn't have enough money to buy a bar of chocolate and we had to work out how much the bar of chocolate was. We also looked at um, the sweet shop items where we had to uh, work out the individual cost of each particular sweet item and I like that one. I think the children enjoy that one too because it had the graphics and so on. And I think the one they enjoyed most in a way was the um, money maze when they actually came up to the board and they were able to draw the lines and so on and so forth. And the idea on that particular one was to uh, get through from the beginning of the maze to the end of the maze with the most money possible. Um, £100, take away 10 equals 90. 240 take away 50 is 190. The pupils who really uh, enjoyed it most or got the most out of it were the ones who are mathematically very able. There wasn't much really to grab their attention. There was the intellectual challenge, of course, but they, they're so used to having all the, um, you know, the entertainment, rewards, levels. They need that kind of challenge. You, know, you have to be able to appeal to today's generation, but some of these problems I don't think that they necessarily did. Um, I, don't, I can't see myself using one of the problems as a particular basis for a, an individual lesson. I, I personally, I would just use it as a brain gene. Judy, Norma had quite strong views about how she would use the Enrich website. How much support is there for teachers explaining different ways that they could use it? Well, each problem has tips, hints, um, ideas of how to start solutions. So I, I think it's how you use it. Um, and maybe um, if that teacher perhaps used it in a different way, perhaps she had a very firm views of how she was going to use it and it didn't work and fit in the way she wanted to. But she said she would use it again. And I, I think that's what you've got to do. Have an open mind, have a look at the resources. How can I use that to suit my children in my class? All right, well, let's see what the panel think. Fran, coming to you first. What are your views? I think most of the teachers that I work with see the resource as an alternative or an added extra to what they're doing so they can develop the problem solving process within the classroom, use the problems there and of course one of the things they most like is the associated problems at the bottom so you've got five mm. similar problems yeah. so they can then develop the same theme and it's 
you know, embedding that understanding of a particular problem type and developing it further. So I think it has its value. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and for me, I chose, um, there's one particular activity called Two Clocks that I thought was absolutely, was absolutely superb because it's, it's calling upon what children should have been taught what they should know at a particular age range, yeah. but also it's getting them to actually use a lot of cues into finding out what the right answer is. And when I was doing it myself, I found it very challenging mentally. And it's, it captivated me for a very, very long time until I sort of saw what was going on. And I found myself talking about, well, how can that be the right time? What, what clues am I using? And then I went back to the end of the page and I saw there was a, there was a top, the top five and how to actually progress and how to actually sort of get other problems from this one problem. Well, that's obviously a very popular one over there. There's lots to the site, though, yes. and it's free. Yes. OK, <laughs> well, let's move on now to Judy's second choice of resource. And these are these wonderful multicoloured tiles. Judy, tell us, what is this resource and why do you like it? Um, it's the ATM, or Association of Mathematics, um, MATS, which are mathematical activity tiles. Now, they've been around for a long time. They feel, and I can think they give the appearance of a beer mat because that's where the concept was conceived. <laughs> You're right. um, uh, they are beer mat material. They are, they? exactly <laughs> that. Um, the, in a pack, you'll mostly get regular polygons. Is this um, one pack? This is one small pack right. for a class. Um, I think, I, I personally think you can use these from key stage one all the way up to key stage four. I mean, this um, dodecahedron here, my year twos, constructed one each for themselves for that and just yeah. got so enthralled with it they were beginning to get to know the properties of um, a 3d shape well great thank you these sound really interesting let's see how they went down in the classroom we returned to simon mark's jewish school where teacher rowan plunkett is using the tiles with his year three class today i was using a resource called mats uh, for the first time um, which is basically a set of shapes uh, 2d shapes which are on cardboard um, with various patterns on them. I decided to make some 3D shapes using them. I started off with my lesson um, looking at different shapes and the names of shapes and we had to do quite a, work, a bit of work on their vocab. Um, so we played a quick game trying to use that vocab at the start um, so that they were familiar with them. Hey, first question. Is it 2D? Yes! yes. Most of the shapes that uh, the children were making were prisms. Um, that was my bottom group. And then I had a few children that decided to make other 3D shapes, uh, uh, pyramids. And then I had some my tops, which were making some more complex shapes, uh, some of the hedrons, cube octahedron, etc. We're trying to make that, and it's quite hard, because like, it's got, it has eight triangles and six squares. From then they had to count how many faces, how many edges and how many vertices um, together with a partner and tell everyone what properties that shape had. It's got 14 faces, 12 vertices and 24 edges. I think the, the students um, definitely enjoyed the resource. Um, to them I think it was just a matter of playing and um, they didn't realise how much work they were actually putting in. I think it, it just came natural to them, so I think it was, it was a very good lesson. If you want something easy that's ready to, to use, um, it is quite a valuable resource because there are different activities that you could use with them. So I probably would use them again, um, but whether I would buy them or not, I think um, maybe it's a bit too expensive for what it is, really. Well, fairly popular, Judy, but I can't help bringing up this issue of quite expensive for what you get. Yes, he, he has a point that one set costs 40 odd pounds. Um, but if you use the right adhesive, after a while you can just peel off the adhesive and use them all again. I mean, here they've been put together with masking tape, which again, you can just peel off and use again. So I think the expense thing, Maybe, I, I think it's how you use it. Does it come with any sort of support pack? There is a, there is a book, um, a handbook you can purchase. It is old <laughs> and it's, um, it's actually typed 
um, so it doesn't look very attractive. Um, I believe ATM are looking at um, revamping this and perhaps producing a primary and a secondary version. Um, but what's in here doesn't mean to say it's old and out of date. The no. mathematics in here is really good and there's some good ideas. Well, Judy's clearly a fan. Isaac, what do you think of the tiles? When I've used them in the classroom myself, it's the language that, that is provoked from using from, from the children themselves. And I think that is, what's, that is what overtakes the cost of them. Just by, just by doing and just by putting together and just by making and forming, that is just so, so rich for them. So even though they're very simple and it is a bit like a game, you're actually getting so much more from it. Is that right, Fran? Well, I have to say I don't agree. Oh. <laughs> um, I used them for years and for 3D shape, Polydron beats them hands down because it's immediate. Uh, and I just feel that, you know, this alongside Polydron works well, but on its own, I wouldn't invest in this. With the Polydron, you've got all the... Um um, the connectors, so they're not a clear straight edge right. side. Where is this so where is? this is, and I think it just reinforces the properties of the shape. Okay, well now let's move on to Judy's third choice of resource, which is a textbook that you can buy from the Enrich website. Judy, it's called Maths Trails, Generalising. Tell us about this resource and why you like it. Well, generalising um, is the heart of mathematics. It's, it is mathematics. Um, and I think teachers when when you're getting up to the top end of key stage two and you want to enrich their experience of um, how mathematics the mathematical structures work together um, because it's not just a book as you see there's a, yes, a cd rom there with it. Um, so it's generalizing from um, patterns generalizing from um, games and investigations number and then moving on to creating formula okay well let's see over here fran what do you think of this book for teachers? I actually really like this and my main reason for that is because most of the teachers ask that their biggest concern is how do we do it? How do we teach it? And the, I think the joy of this book is it tells them how to do it. Right. So I like it. Isaac, is this something that you would recommend to maths teachers? It's great as an actual booklet on its own, but to actually for a teacher or let's say an NQT, to picking it up and trying to follow through as a, as a course, I would not sort of advocate because I'd want to sort of bring my own um, individual feeling into it. All right, well, just time for a final comment from Judy, perhaps picking up on Isaac's point there. Well, I think there isn't a book like this on the market, I don't think, in, in, because of the structure that it gives teachers. Um, it's not, generalising isn't a step by step, this is what you do, this is what you do next, this is what you do next. I think this gives you lots of activities to help the children um, develop those skills and the, and the teacher to help right. enhance those skills. Well, thank you all very much. Three good resources there from Judy with some interesting discussion. Just to recap, the resources that we looked at were the Enrich website from the University of Cambridge, the mathematical activity tiles from ATM, and finally, Maths Trails Generalising from the Enrich team, published by Cambridge University Press. For more information about the resources that we've discussed today, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or if you want to, email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. So I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel, to Judy, to Fran and to Isaac. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye.